Let's see here. I think uh, what is it? this one was um, has a, a challenge in it. So this one's probably the one I should do with you. And so this one is on what? Accounts receivable. So this week we're covering accounts receivable and inventory. So I think I'll do this accounts receivable with you tonight. And then the one on inventory I will record for you because I won't be able to do live sessions next week. And I'll make the recording available for you to view as if we're there together. Oh, is that okay? Everybody okay with that? Okay, so yes. I, need yes, a, I need a reader so you don't have to hear just my voice the whole time. So let me get up here. Somebody wanna volunteer, you're just gonna read from the word assume down to the end of this one. Loud and clear, somebody. Anybody? Yes. Assume that the Lambert accounting staff has already made all necessary adjusting entries at December 31st, year one, with the exception of the adjustment to record the current year's bad debt expense. Use the information in the exhibit and the values you calculated in the allowance calculation task to prepare the journal entry that records the bad debt expense for year one, if any. Continuing the black or the red or the just, blue? Uh, just go ahead, continue the whole thing, please. Okay. Lambert Incorporated is a manufacturer of men's casual clothing. The founder and CEO of the company retired on June 30th, year one, after 10 years of management. During this time, sales and net profits increased modestly, but the CEO was very conser conservative about taking credit risks. On July 1, year one, Lambert hired a new CEO with a strong marketing background. The company adopted a new business plan, which includes aggressive expansion into new markets and liberal, liberalization of the company's credit policy. This new business plan was implemented in the fourth quarter of year one and resulted in a significant increase in sales for the month of, of December. Lambert uses the allowance method to record doubtful accounts for financial statement reporting. In prior years, Lambert estimated its uncollectible accounts receivable by applying an estimated percentage to each category reported on the accounts receivable aging analysis. This percentage is based on historical data. The following table summar summarizes the accounts receivable receivable aging analysis at December 31st, year one, and the related estimated percentage uncollectible for each category. Okay, perfect, thank you so much. So my first question is, as I read this problem, I thought, why do I really need to know this information in blue? Is this information that we need to know? Probably we don't have to know this information, but as an accountant, you'll go into your client or even if you work, if you're a management accounting and accountant and you're working for one company, you do need to have a feel for what's going on in the organization. So what we learned in this paragraph is, or in this paragraph, is that a new CEO is now in charge. So this new CEO is going to be more aggressive in marketing uh, techniques or marketing campaigns and uh, expand sales and things like that. So when we come down here further, we learn, um, where did we learn that? I guess um, somewhere does it say, he talks about increasing it by 2%. <laughs> well, we haven't heard that yet. Somewhere we're gonna hear that. Okay. so. When you go into a client, you might not know information, so you have to ask a lot of questions because typically the client doesn't know what you need to know to do your job. Likewise, there are things happening in the organization that everybody just assumes that you would know, like there's a new CEO and sales have increased. So your job is to ask questions to um, get a better feel for what's going on. Now, coming down here, we do need to know this information, right? We know that 
the um, all necessary adjusting entries or year end adjusting entries have been made except the one to record bad debt expense. We know that there are two methods to record bad debt expense, right? Well, yes, there's more than two actually. So that you can do a direct write-off, which isn't GAAP, so we're not gonna use that method. So the other method is to use an allowance account. The allowance is either gonna be as a percentage of accounts receivable or as a percentage of sales. In this case, the company uses an allowance to record its doubtful accounts. Now this word doubtful comes in and out of terminology. So sometimes it's called bad debt expense. And then we have allowance for doubtful accounts, or I've seen it called allowance for uncollectible accounts. So those two things mean the same thing. So it's even here, allowance to record doubtful accounts. And then down here, uh, this, in the same company, they're talking about uncollectible accounts. So it's the same. They're doubtful, they're uncollectible. I think doubtful is the more current terminology because uncollectible sounds kind of definitive. Like we know we're not collecting them. Okay, and the percentage of uncollectible accounts is based on historical data, based on the uncollectible accounts that we've had in the past. And here's our following table. So this is our table and uh, this is not given to you, this $68,000 figure here. So if you just ignore that for now, the table looks like this. And then this little cell here is not there. <laughs> so that's what it looks like. So it's collect the estimate of uncollectible accounts is given at 1, 9, 23, and 60%. And then somewhere around here, we're told that, where is it? The CEO decides that these percentages are not high enough. So the CEO recommends that all of these percentages of uncollectible accounts be increased by 2%. Now I know that's in here somewhere, but apparently I did not highlight it. There we go, right there. Increased by two percentage points. And let's put that in here also. For some reason, my eyes pick up on numbers better. Okay, so the two percentage points. So it was this, these numbers, uh, I just added 2%. So now we have a 2% figure. And basically what you would do is to take the balance or the aging schedule, zero to 30 days, $225,000 balance, multiply that times 3% and you get this figure. So if you look up in the formula up here, the formula for this cell, cell F15 is to take cell B15, B15 and multiply it by E15. So we get 6750. So then I did that for this next row. I took 240,000 and multiplied it by 11% and we got 26,400. And then those accounts that are 61 to 90 days uh, past due, we're going to multiply by 25% and we get 31,750. And those accounts that are over 90 days delinquent, we're going to multiply that balance of 85,000 by 62% and we come up with 42,160. Oh no, we don't come up with that because there's something else that happened in here that I need to talk to you about. Okay, so let's see, that's what, so you don't have this column when you see the problem. So maybe I should do it that way. No, I won't do it that way. <laughs> I won't do it that way because I already multiplied this since I knew that these were definitely raising by 2%. What makes this uh, problem somewhat challenging is the information that happened after the close of the year. So to begin, I give you a hint which says this calls for a T account. Whenever you have, whenever I have an allowance for doubtful accounts account, I always use a T account. So here's my T account to get me started. An allowance for doubtful accounts. And there's a little comment in there. It says it's a contra asset. The asset is accounts receivable. So it gives, it tells us somewhere up here above in the problem that there, and I have this color coded. The beginning balance of the allowance for doubtful accounts is 62,000. So there, that, there is that number. And then this, act, the activity in this account during year one consists of the write off of accounts valued at $19,000. So we're in the allowance for doubtful accounts. So remember the allowance for doubtful accounts account is 
we don't know which client, we don't know which customers are going to default at this point. We're just making an allowance for it because we know historically some of them will default, but we don't really know who. So right now we have $62,000 in there. $19,000 has been written off. So we wrote them off. We can't write off an account until we know which account is going to default, right? We know that they either died or they went to prison or they declared bankruptcy or they're missing, something like that. Once we know that we're not going to get paid, we can write that account off. When we write it off, we know who it is and therefore we know that it's no longer it should no longer be accounted for as potentially uncollectible. Does that make sense? In the allowance, the allowance account is full of, or this balance is full of account balances, but we don't know which accounts. We just know some of them aren't going to pay. Once we know who doesn't pay, we have to take them out. So that's why this $19,000 is a debit to that allowance account. Because we wrote off $19,000 and therefore we know that we don't have to quote unquote allow for these accounts to be uncollectible. Because we know they were uncollectible now. We know who they are and we have written them off so we need to take them out of the allowance balance. Good? Okay, where else do we have here? Um, okay, so we have that. Okay, oh, um, there's a recovery of $4,000. So a recovery means that the, the account was written off. Let's say that the, we wrote the client's account off because they went to prison and we figured they're going to be in prison for a while. They're not going to pay us. We're going to write it off. But they got out of prison. <laughs> and they got a job and they paid us off so since they paid us off we don't really need to remove that from our allowance account we're going to put that back in here because it was recovered so now this account is or this four thousand dollar balance is among the accounts that can um, become uncollectible where is this twelve thousand written So are we, are we good so far up to here? We have the 62 beginning balance. The 19 has been written off. So since we know which accounts were written off, we remove them from the allowance because the allowance is a group of unnamed clients, right? It's just a, a number. We don't know who. We also see down here that, the, or we had the $4,000, which we have um, rein, reinstated. We've recovered the 4,000. Now this says, after the after the staff have done their year end, re, uh, they've done all the adjustments for the year. At the end of the year, there's always a review of accounts receivable to make sure everything's right. So in that review, the accounts uh, an accounts receivable for twelve thousand dollars was invoiced in February. It wasn't until November that some of that balance or that balance was written off. It was written off because the client declared bankruptcy. Also at the end of the year, a receivable, we were learned that a receivable that was invoiced in August was collected. But when it was collected, the journal entry to record that, which would have been a debit to cash and a credit to the receivables, that journal entry was not, did not occur. So therefore, it's still sitting in accounts receivable, this $5,000, and it's also going to be sitting up here in our balance of uncollectible accounts. So we need to remove it. The only part of this problem that's tricky, most of it's pretty straightforward and I think most of you would get through it quickly, but the only part that's a little tricky is right here. We have to pay attention to the date at which the account became uncollectible, deemed uncollectible, or the date at which it became, or the date at which we collected it. Now recognize that when we collect the money, 
that removes it from the uncollectible account. So it's also going to be a negative. So what I did, I hope this make, is clear when I show it to you how I handled this. As I said, okay, so we have this $12,000 was deemed uncollectible. So therefore, I need to remove it from the grouping of allowance for uncollectible accounts because I know it's uncollectible, right? This is a, this is a case where the person died or no, they did, what do they do? They declared bankruptcy. So this client declared bankruptcy. We're not going to collect that $12,000. It, but we did, they didn't declare bankruptcy or we didn't find out until November 30th. So in November, that's the last 30 days of the year. So therefore, we're going to say that we need to subtract this $12,000 from this beginning from the balance of the counts that were past due more than 90 days. So we have 85,000. Are you following me? If not, say so, please. <laughs> we have $85,000 of accounts receivable that we don't anticipate that we're going to receive. Oh, yeah, we don't. These are accounts receivable that we think we're not going to receive. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> this is our accounts receivable balance. A, per, a certain percentage of them we are thinking we're not going to receive. But once we found out that the person declared bankruptcy, we knew we weren't going to receive it. So we don't have to think anymore. We know for sure. So we're going to subtract 12,000 from that 85,000. So now we have our 85,000 and we're going to subtract the 12,000. And that brings us down to 73,000. Moving on a little bit further, we see that an accounts receivable for $5,000, which was invoiced in August, was collected in August. However, it was not properly removed from the accounts receivable subsidiary ledger and the aging analysis. So we also had to remove this $5,000 because it should not be in the uncollectible account because we shouldn't be in accounts receivable because we collected it. So let's subtract that 5,000 and that gives us 68,000. So that's where I, that's how I went from $85,000 in accounts receivable that are over 90 days old. I subtracted out the $12,000 that I have written off because it's no longer in accounts receivable, right? I took it out by crediting accounts receivable and debiting the bad debt. And also I'm taking out this $5,000 for a different reason, which is that it was paid. So it's no longer sitting in accounts receivable. So now my balance that of accounts receivable that are past due more than 90 days is 68,000. Let's make sure we're good so far on that part. Any questions so far? It's better to ask questions as we go along instead of waiting to the end if you think you okay, have. Okay, that part is clear to me, um, Dr. Sherry, but does that ever affect the percentage that we have um, deemed uncollectible? That's a different issue. It is. We are going to have the uncollectible go up by 2%, but not because of this. Okay. Yeah. The, the percentage went up because we have a new CEO and the new CEO thinks that the, the estimate for uncollectible accounts is too low and he or she said we need to increase it two points, 2%. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. So here we're down here at this last state, this last statement as a result of the change, the credit policy, uh, the CEO, oh, now he became a CFO. What did I do? I promoted him or something? <laughs> okay, well, I guess he's a CEO, CFO. Uh, Believes that the estimate uh, for each should be 2% more. So I just added 2% here. That's all I did from 1%. And then I took, I made my uh, estimated uncollectible. So I have 225,000 times 3% gives us this. And now this figure is the only one that would be different if you didn't recognize that you need to subtract out 
the $12,000 receivable that we had to write off because the person went bankrupt, the client went bankrupt, and the 5,000 that we had to write off, that we had to remove from uncollectible because we actually collected the cash already. So then we have a total here of 107,060. We still haven't answered the question yet. The question they want us to solve is, what is bad debt expense for the year of 2000X1? Sometimes you'll have a problem and it will give you bad debt expense, but the, if you see a table like this, an aging table, that means that the way to solve the problem is to find out the ending balance in that aging table, which will be the ending balance of your allowance account, and then work backwards to find the bad debt expense. So let's do that now. Oops. So here's my allowance account. We know we had, they gave us the beginning balance. We know that we had that $19,000 that, that was written off, so we removed that from the allowance. This $12,000 was deemed uncollectible because of the bankruptcy. We recovered $4,000. That gives us a $35,000 account balance before the adjustment. I must have moved something because that used to have an answer in it. So the ending balance is now going to be, wait, let me see what that's referring to, C20. C20 doesn't have anything in it, okay. <laughs> that would explain that. All right, so what should that be? This should be the ending balance on the table there, right there. So that is the ending balance in the allowance account. And once I put that ending balance in, then I can work backwards, which is what I did, to come up with bad debt expense. So I say this bad debt expense is a plug figure. It's a plug figure or uh, you have to force fit it. So I know that the account balance before the adjustments is 35,000. I compu We compute it together. The ending balance in the allowance account was 107060. And when I subtract 35,000 from 107060, that gives me bad debt expense. So that is the final answer. Any questions? No, good. Okay. So really, a very easy problem until they threw this part in here. I recognize the issues, but what I failed to do is read it really clearly because I like to read real fast and pull the numbers out, but I didn't stop and look at it when it said declared bankruptcy in November 1st. So the first time I did the problem, I missed that date of the bankruptcy. And so I therefore missed that I had to take it out of this count, this row. And I did the same thing here. I read the 5,000, was invoiced in August 1st, however, not properly recorded. And when I realized I missed that, I came back and put it here. Previously, I had both of those figures as a deduction from the balance that was here, which was different at the time. So don't make my mistake. Recognize that both of these happened um, uh, in their over 90 days, more than 90 days because August is more than 90 days from December 31st, and so is no and November declared bankruptcy. Uh, the balance has not yet been written off, so we wrote it off at the end of the year. Okay, so that's all there is. Uh, this problem's really pretty easy other than that. Any questions on the allowance account in general or? Okay, so what I'd like to do now is take time, since we're ending a little bit sooner than we normally end, take time to talk about the project. Oh, we have to finish up. I'm sorry, we didn't do our journal entry. Okay. Let's do our journal entry. So bad debt expense, I, that's obvious. So I put that in there for you. And the amount is going to be 
the same. Let's see, we need to, I need to squish this down a little bit. Okay, so that would be the amount, right? That 107. So we'll just say our debit equals this number. And our credit will answer the same, will equal the same. What is the credit called? What's the name of the account? When you debit the bad debt expense, what would the credit be? Oh, um, Professor, the bad debt expense is the 72, right? Oh, excuse me. Yeah, you're right. Thank you. Bad debt expense, right? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Equals 72060, right? And the same thing here. What's the credit? What's it? Oops. Moving too quickly for my hands. What is the name of the account for the credit? There's your options. Allowance for bad debt fill accounts or bad debt expense? Allowance. Yes. Allowance. Good. Okay, so that's a journal entry. Okay, so what I think, is there any questions here before we move on? Could you do this without me? Yes, certainly. Certainly. 